أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Oh my goodness, it's the 6th of Muharram You know, these days before the day of Ashura I'm really here to revitalize, to awaken us to become Q Hussein, to become Brand Hussein and our aim has always been to fall in love with the rub of Hussein and his book, Screw the Love of Hussein, for he said, and for you I shall be an example. And we focused on his words, which he used before the, um, when he requested, before the day of Ashura, and he requested for one night of Ibadah, and he said, Ana uhibu salah, I love salah. وَتِلَاوَةِ كِتَابِهِ And I love to recite his book. وَكَثْرَةِ الدُّعَى And I love to do lots of du'a. وَالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ And I love to do istighfar, which is asking for forgiveness. In all these four, an encompassed in salah. So our topic has been the A to Z of salah. But before we go into it, let's recite some Qur'an and we'll start with Surah Al-Fatiha. So please recite with me. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله العظيم Close your eyes, ask Allah to give the thawabs to all the marhumin, especially those of your family, pray for those who are ill and those who are in trouble. Let us also recite another surah of Qur'an and this is Surah Al-Lahab. It's good for tummy ache. Always take your medicine as well because it's dawa and dua, medicine and dua, and this surah is really good for tummy aches. So please recite with me. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim, tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab, ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab, zayasla naran zhat al-lahab, wa mra'atuhu hammalat al-hatab, في جيدها حبل من مسد صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين We're now going to recite a marthia like we normally do. Again, I've taken it from the book Ya Hussein. Now because tomorrow is the 7th of Muharram and it was from the 7th of Muharram that water was stopped to the to the to the family of Imam Hussein and his companions and imagine the children so we will focus on a marthia based on thirst and it's marthia number seven and it's on page nine of the book Ya Hussein so please recite it with me can I have a salawat please first Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajahum I hear the cries of the children the children of Hussein, it rings in my ears. Al Atash, Al Atash, the thirst is killing us. Al Atash, Al Atash, the thirst is killing us. Al Atash, Al Atash, the children of Hussein. Weren't there any Muslims in the army of Yazid? Were there no fathers who had a human heart? On the burning sand, the children of Hussein cried out. On the burning sand, the children of Hussein cried out. Al Atash, Al Atash, the thirst is killing us. Sakina looked at her uncle Abbas. He went to Furat to get some water. They cut off his arms. They pierced the water bag. They cut off his arms. They pierced the water bag. Al Adash, Al Adash, the thirst is killing her. I hear the cries of the children, the children of Hussein. It rings in my ears. Al Adash, Al Adash, the thirst is killing us. Al Adash, Al Adash, the thirst is killing us. Al Adash, Al Adash, 
the children of Hussein. Can we have a salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajahum. So now we're going to look at the topic of this year, which is the A to Z of Salah. And like I said, it is in essence focusing on the words of Imam Hussein when he said, Ana uhibbu salah, I love Salah. And I love to recite his book. And I love to do lots of dua. We talked about it yesterday when we did Kunut. And well, istighfar. And I love istighfar, he said. And I love to ask forgiveness, which we will talk about today, inshallah. So before we go any further, let's look at a revision of the letters we have already done. So A is for acceptance. And if Salah is accepted, all other deeds are accepted. And if it's rejected, all are rejected. Basically because to reach our full potential, we need divinity's help. And that's what we're placed on earth for. And Salah is so important in that connection. You know, it's Mi'raj al-Mu'mineen. It's Uruj's height. It's what takes you and I up. Up means to our full potential. Alan, I've always said this. Please make sure you recite Adhan loudly at home. If not five times, at least three times. A Mu'min is like water. We talked about Ki Hussein, and that's being transparent. Trust, trustworthiness, truthfulness, and rahma, Like incredible compassion. That's what it's all about. And wudu, try and be in wudu all the time. Orientation, oh my goodness. We've talked about this, but uh, repetition is good. Enough of the dhikra, Quran says, towards the Kaaba. Can you imagine? Billions of Muslims, all the Muslims of the world, facing towards the Kaaba. All praying to Allah. Can you imagine the vibes? The whole of the earth becomes one prayer mat. So orientation for everything it is absolutely amazing. And then we looked at niya or intention. My goodness. The soul's decision on doing something. And remember the prophet said that niya is even greater than the action. Why do you pray? We have asked ourselves. Why do we do it? For what? And then takbir, Allahu Akbar. The meeting has begun. You've been called into the boardroom, all phones away, everything away. Focus totally on the chair, the one who's on the chair. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, he's greater than everything and anyone. All our energies, absolutely everything is calling us towards him. Qiyam, to be able to stand in salah. To be able to, in our heads, know we are in the presence of he who is absolutely everything. You know, you think of all those 99 names, absolutely every single one. Rahman, Rahim, Malik, Quddus, the most phenomenal creator we have. And more so, Rahman and Rahim. The most incredibly, tremendously benevolent, kind, merciful. Ruku. And I mentioned, imagine your sins being on your shoulders and your head. And as you bow down, they go, but it's politeness as well. And when you look between your legs, that's the only place you occupy. That's how insignificant we are. Oh, and sujood, my goodness, isn't that beautiful? And look what Imam Sahabik says, I swear by Allah that one who performs this sujood as it should be even for a single time in his life would not be a loser. Can you imagine focusing on our sujood in every salah? Ya Allah, I'm connecting to you. This is, I am your slave. Full stop. Nobody else is. I connect to you and everybody, anybody else and nobody else. Just like Hussein taught me. Freedom from everyone but the rub of Hussein. The shahud was about wait, wakefulness. You're coming back. You know, you started with the shahud in Adhan and Ikama, and now you're coming back to say, yeah, we're going back to the world, but with the with an extra layer of, of wahdaniyat. And then finally, salam, which is safety from satanic intrusions. We looked at Isli'adha, and I'd just like to mention a quote from the Prophet when he said, I seek refuge in your generosity. Isn't that amazing? So even when you're seeking refuge from shaitan, here saying, I'm seeking refuge from shaitan, but Allah, I'm seeking refuge in your generosity. We talked about how we can only experience Quran in, in Salah. You know, in um, if we look at the Quran, it says, al-Qur'ana li fahal min This is in Surah Al-Qamar. Surah number 54, Allah says, And indeed we have made the Qur'an easy to remember. Is there anybody who will mind? Now we'll talk about dhikr, but dhikr is remembrance. Dhakir is one who remembers. And then as you come down, muzdakir and muzdakir and mutadhakir, and you come, come 
you come down to the last one, it's actually a reduction of effort. So now let me let me change this. Let me paraphrase it. We have made the Quran extremely easy for anyone who can put even a tiny bit of effort. And Allah mentions this twice, four times in the surah. Ayah 17, Ayah 22, Ayah 32, and Ayah 40 of Surah Al-Qamah. It's on a reduction basis. If you put that much effort, and I mean, what better place than Salah? We talked about Jama'ah and Jama'ah. If you remember, we talked on Friday about it. Always a place where we get together. And I know this pandemic is difficult, but even then to meet people, even if you're meeting them online or you're meeting them with social distancing, you're meeting them. And that is part of what Salah is. Because Salah is, is its manifestation is in how we treat humanity. Oh my goodness. The, uh, sometimes there's a difference between what I think I want and what I really want. You know, I, I used to love this. When someone calls on Allah, Allah says, where are you? I've been waiting for you. Call him by his Asmaal Husna. You know, and you ask why the different names, but you got to make sure that they correspond with your different needs. He told Musa, Ya Musa, Sawni kulla ma tahtaju. Ask me for everything you need. The salt in your dough, the shoelaces in your shoes. Absolutely every, everything. And you know what I like? I mean, kunut, make it as long as possible. I told you what Imam Sadiq says when he was asked, long surah, long kunut? He said, long kunut. Ask for everything. The very fact that you and I have been given the blessing of doing dua, it means that he will not deprive us of answers. That's just absolutely phenomenal. We talked about dhikr. Just continually remembering Allah. And I said one of the signs of a believer was that, you know, you'd mention Allah in everything. When you love someone, they just come up in every conversation. And so when we love Allah, that's a conversation you should come up in. And then enhance Salah. Add those little tiny, tiny bits, you know, to make it prettier, nicer. Recite the zikr a few times. You know, when we say, Subhana Rabbi Allah, Allah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allahumma salli ala wa Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Look up all the extra mustahabad. And when you have time, keep on adding them on. That's what makes that salah so phenomenal. But today, we're going to look at forgiveness or istighfar. Look at the prophet, what the Prophet said. He said, sometimes my heart is enveloped by a cover of dust. And for this, I ask Allah's forgiveness seven times. Now, you know, when we go into such, when we go into such that, right? So remember, we talked about it. Minha khalaqnakum, we have created you from it. And then we raise you up. And then we send you back again in sajda. And then we get you back up again. And this is the ayah of Surah Al-Taha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'aidukum wa minha nukhrijakum taratan ukhra. So when we are created from it, we rise up. That is the beginning of life. Then we go back into it. We go back into it. And then we come up again. That's a day of resurrection. So our life, in essence, is, is the julus in between the two sajdas. And what do we say? Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu So we're going to just look a little bit at forgiveness and how important it is. You know, sometimes when we pray, we do sajda. And then we come up and go and we go back again. We don't even ponder. We've got to think slightly. The first du'a that the human being made was asking for forgiveness. Um, Surah Al-Araf, Ayah 23, when Prophet Adam and Sayyidah Hawa ate of the tree, they said, Rabbana dhalamna anfusana. Our Rabb, we have been unjust to ourselves. This was their first du'a. And Allah responded with forgiveness. We find that in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 37. See, when they said, If you do not forgive us, and you do not have mercy on us, then we will be of the losers. Now, immediately, Allah replies to them, and it's really amazing what he says to them. And this is what we think in between the two sajdas. He says to them, he says to them, You know, he Adam received some words from Allah, kalimatin, words, fataba alayhi. And he turned to him mercifully. Inna hu rahim. Allah is one who is off returning to mercy and he is the most merciful. 
It's the fur, the word comes from milfar. Milfar is a covering of the head from something harmful. So rifar is a helmet that a person wears to protect his head. So when we do istighfar, it's asking Allah to be able to protect us, covering our sins with his mercy and protection from the harm that we inflict upon ourselves. Isn't that what we need all the time? That's what it's about. He keeps on saying, وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبِّكُمْ Ask your Rabb for forgiveness. ثُمَّ دُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Then turn to him. إِنَّ رَبِّي رَحِيمٌ وَدُودٌ Your Rabb is Rahim. He is extremely merciful. And he is extremely loving. Like extremely loving. You know, there should never be a time in our, in our minds when we sort of say that he will not forgive us. No matter how far we've gone, how far astray we are, how many sins we have committed, there is no place too far for his forgiveness and his mercy to reach. And the greatest gift is istighfar and tawbah. You know, one of my most favorite ayat of the Quran is, قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Say, O oh Muhammad, tell them, O oh my servants who have who have been extravagant on their souls, in other words, who have crossed the limit so many times. La taqnatu mi rahmatillah. Keep on repeating to yourself. La taqnatu mi rahmatillah. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yakfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah can forgive all your sins. Inna huwa al-ghafur rahim Oh my goodness. He is the most... Forgiving the most merciful. So when you are sitting in between those two sajdas and you're saying, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubulay, at least remember this this ayah. Remember, La taqnatu mi rahmatillah. Don't ever despair of his mercy. Just don't despair of it. Inna Allah yaqfiru dhunuba jamia. He can forgive all sins. And remember this verse, Inna hu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. He is the most merciful. And he's the most forgiving. A fool? Oh my goodness, most forgiving. I could just go on and on about this. So Imam Ali is once sitting with his companions. And someone comes in and says, Ya Ali, I really need a du'a for increase in sustenance. And then somebody said, Ya, and somebody else came in. And Ya Ali, children, I want children. And somebody came in and said, Ya Ali, you know, I, I want to be able to be successful. I want to do offer success to all of them. The Imam Ali said, do istighfar. And when these three people had gone away, the companion says, Ya Ali, there were diverse problems, but you just gave them one du'a. You told them to do istighfar. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubri, which you and I say between the two sajdas. So Imam quoted them, I attend to 12 of um, Surah An-Nur, where Allah says, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Then I said, ask forgiveness of your Rabb, he's the most forgiving. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاعُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا He will send down upon you the clouds, pouring an abundance of rain, which is abundance of sustenance. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ He will help you with wealth, he will help you with children. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا And he will make for you gardens and rivers, in other words, he will give you success. So don't disregard that is the far you do in between the two sajdas. It is just phenomenal. And you know what? Whenever you can get time, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubulay. My goodness, it just covers so much. It covers a whole plethora of hajat, as you want to call it. By the way, I forgot to tell you that that favorite ayah, Ya ibadi alladhi nasrafu ala anfusim la taqnatu min rahmatillah, it's Surah Al-Zumar, Surah number 39, ayah 53. Look it up. And you know, if you can't look it up, at least remember in between the two sajdas, write it on a post-it note, stick it on your musalla, put 39.53. And every time you sit up and say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu say it calmly and imagine the amount of rahmah that's pouring on you. And now, G for gratitude. Oh, another favorite subject of mine. So let's start with an ayah of Quran. In Surah to Ibrahim, ayah 7, Allah says, وَإِذْ تَعَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ And when your Rabb announced, oh my goodness, he did Adhan, he announced, Allah announced, what did he say? لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَعَزِيدًا لَكُمْ If you thank me, I will increase for you. I will certainly give you more. So generally, gratitude is described as shukr, the quality of being thankful. The first word, and remember we said the first du'a was istighfar. 
of Prophet Adam, or the first human being. The first words he spoke were Alhamdulillah. So you can imagine, the angels were told to collect all the all the elements of the earth, put them together, and they're molding this body, and Allah blows his spirit into this human being who sneezes. And the first thing he says is Alhamdulillah. All praise and gratitude belong to Allah. Even you and I, when we start Surah Al-Fatiha, what do we say? Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Praise and gratitude belong to Allah. And shukr or praise, gratitude, gratitude, thankfulness, is not based on how much I have. It's not based on circumstance, but it's on the state of the soul. It's how I feel inside. It's not an emotion. It doesn't just spontaneously come out and you say, Oh, thank you, you've given me a lot. Thank you, you haven't given me a lot. It's not like that. It comes through practice. It's a manifestation of that trust and belief in Allah that, you know, I've tried my best. I did my 101%. Now I hand it over to him. And whatever is there is a manifestation of his glory, of his subhan. And therefore, do you know what? I'm going to say thank you. If Prophet Yunus in the belly of the fish could say, La ilaha illa ant, there is no God but you. What did he say? I lie land subhanaka inni kuntu min al subhanaka. I declare your perfection. I'm in the belly of a fish. It's dark. It's horrible. I don't know what to do. But he says, I declare your perfection. Oh, glory be to you. I am one of those who have been unjust to myself. You know, when Imam Zain al Abdin was asked that we are your Shias, he said, What do you do when you get something? Oh, we say, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, God. What do you say when something's taken away? Well, we get a little upset. Oh, we might cry a bit. And what if you don't get anything? Well, we don't do anything. We well, said the dogs of Medina are like that. You give them something, they bark and they're happy. When something's taken away, they, you know, they're a bit upset and they bark upsetting. And when nothing's given to them, they roam in the streets. Our Shias are those who say, Alhamdulillah, when something is given, Alhamdulillah, when something is taken away. And Alhamdulillah, when they're not given anything, because they have tried their best. And you know, again, this is in Surah Ibrahim. If you were to count the na'mas, the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to compute them. My goodness, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. Now, these two should be a thread that runs through our salah. It's really, really important that we hold on to these two. And you know, even when we finish salah, when we sit up, and I said we sit up to wakefulness of the shower. It is recommended to say, Alhamdulillah. So that's something we could manage, or it's a practice that we can adopt in our lives. But we will go now to Karbala, where those who manifested the concept of gratitude, my goodness, there were none like them. They were absolutely phenomenal. And today we're going to talk about Qasim. You know, we pick different shuhada. We always know that the first one who went to the battlefield was Ali al Akbar. We bring, we we pick different shahada to be able to highlight them. But please make sure you recite, you read about all of them. They were just phenomenal personalities. So Qasim was the son of Imam Hassan, and Um Farwa. Her name was Ramla as well. There were four sons of Imam Hassan in Karbala, and the youngest was 11 years old. So there was Abu Bakr, there was Abdullah, there was Hassan Muthanna, and there was Qasim. Now, the night of Ashura, when, when Imam was reading out the names of Ashuhada, Qasim didn't hear his name. He was very young. He says, what about me, uncle? What about me? And Imam says, how do you view death? And his words are, now they've become phenomenal. They're like, they're like his legacy. He says, for me, to die for the truth is sweeter than honey. Now, on the day of Ashura, his mom kept on telling Qasim, go ask for permission, go permission to fight. He kept on going for permission, and he said, no, can't let you go now. Dejected, he sits outside the tent. He mo his mom comes and says, what's the matter? Now, Zakarin read this, and they say that his mom gives him a letter that she's kept from Imam Hassan. And the letter said, Hussein, I will not be there in your time of need, so accept my Qasim. Imam accepts him, allows him to go. And you can imagine, Imam dresses him up, same way as he did Owen and Muhammad, his little child. You know, he's young, he's, some say 14, 12, whatever, he's young. And Imam dresses him up for the battlefield. And when he goes to the battlefield, now he's being trained by Imam, and as of the bus, there's a 
person called Azra Hashami who sends his four sons and he says, you know what? My sons are going to kill him. Well, Qasim fights a formidable battle and he's able to kill all of them. Enraged, Azra Hashami goes. He too is killed. Now, Humayd ibn Muslim writes that there was one Amr bin Sa'ad Azavi who says, I will attack this child. And Humayd ibn Muslim says, what has he done to you? Qasim is surrounded. He's surrounded by all these people who are pelting him. And suddenly, this man, Amr bin Sa'ad Azbi, comes from the back. And he strikes Qasim, who falls on the ground and cries out, Oh, my uncle, help me. Now, the narrators of the battlefield or the Battle of Karbala write that Imam ran or swooped down on the battlefield like an eagle and he struck the assassin Ibn Sa'ad Azi with his sword who screamed. Now, amongst with these screams, the horses from one side ran to the other side in confusion and from all sides the horses were totally confused and they ran when the dust settled. Imam sees Qasim on the ground, his toes scratching the ground. And Imam says, my child, you called out for help. I couldn't help you. Imam carries him. There are some narrations that say that his body was trampled so much that it was so long that his feet were dragging on the ground. Some narrations say that his body was made into pieces. Allahu ya alam. Anyway, Imam takes him to the tents and lays him near Akbar. He puts his hands on both of them and he says, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Hussein is deprived of his sons. You know, I said there were four sons of Imam, Imam Hassan in Karbala. When Imam Hussein was surrounded, Imam Hassan's youngest son, who was barely 11, ran to him. And if someone tried to reach him and say, Come back. He was hit. Someone cut his arm and Hormala tore his chest apart with his arrow. And Imam was holding him and he said, Bunaya, we will meet your grandfather like this. So one of his sons died in Imam's arms. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Say alamuna al-hadina zanamu ayyamun kalibi. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq to be able to fall in love with the rub of Hussein, his book, Through the Love of Hussein. So we will now recite a noha. Again, I will take it from the book, which is um, Ya Hussein. And today we will pick a Martia. Again, all of you have asked me to recite. And I know I've been reciting it throughout these days, maybe twice now, but we'll recite it again. And that's Marthia number 11. Oh my Asra, I, I guess you just like it. So let's go for it. Oh my Asra, you went to the battlefield. You never came back. You asked for some water. They gave you an arrow. You never came back. Who shall I feed now? Who shall I clothe now? Who shall I rock now? Oh my Asura, you went to the battlefield. You never came back. You asked for some water. They gave you an arrow. You never came back. Your cradle's empty. My heart is broken. Where can I find you? Oh my Asura, you went to the battlefield. You never came back. You asked for some water. They gave you an arrow. You never came back. It's dark in the grave, son. The sand is burning. How will you sleep, my son? Oh, my Asura, you went to the battlefield. You never came back. You asked for some water. They gave you an arrow. You never came back. They brought some water. Sakina will not drink. She's bringing it for you. 
Oh my, a silver, you went to the battlefield, you never came back. You asked for some water, they gave you an arrow, you never came back. I'm going home, son, what will I say when silver asks where's a silver? Oh my, a silver, you went to the battlefield, you never came back. You asked for some water, they gave you an arrow, you never came back. Can we have a salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ahli Muhammad wa ajil farajim. Right, let's stand up for ziyara. So recite the ziyara with me. Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah, Assalamu alayka ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Assalamu alayka ya Fatimah al-Zahra, Assalamu alayka ya Khadijah al-Kubra, Assalamu alayka ya Hassan al-Mujtaba, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah al-lati halat bithnaik. عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر لحظ مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى لي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين وعلى تسعة المعصومين من ذريتك علي ابن الحسين ومحمد ابن علي وجعفر ابن محمد وموسى ابن جعفر وعلي ابن موسى ومحمد ابن علي وعلي ابن محمد والحسن ابن علي والحجة ابن الحسن أجل الله فرجا وسحل الله مخرجا وظهورا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن سلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل الساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وردك توعا وتمديه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد جزاكم الله خير إن شاء الله سيد تمارا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم